Hi everyone, I thought I would make this video because there is quite simply no information online about this particular circuit board which you can see in front of you right now. This is in fact a 12 volt pulse width modulation PC fan temperature controlled speed controller. Um, I'll go through the actual description in a minute. I bought this one on eBay, I paid £5.21 I think it was a UK based seller. I'll put a link to the description below, but there you go on screen right now, you can see the listing of this one. And in fact, there is plenty of these available on eBay and there's a couple on Amazon as well, I've seen. Uh, they're all about the five pound mark um, and the description is pretty poor, hence the reason for this video. I wanted to go through with you what the switches uh, actually do. I wanted to go through some of the features of this one and also go through some of the limitations which nothing is about uh, online to talk about. So first of all, what is it? Well, like I said, it's a 12 volt pulse width modulation fan controller. Um, this will go through some of the connections. Let's just zoom in a minute. Um, some of the connections we've got here, we've got three connections to three fans here. That's fan one, fan two, fan three. Um, we've got 12 volts voltage in here this cable by the way discount this cable this is just for me to power up for you today um, you also get a thermal probe here which uh, you can see here is quite short we'll go into that in a minute and we've got a piezo buzzer as well which connects onto this so the kit comes with the buzzer it also comes with the probe uh, which you can see there Three connections to the three fans, they are standard four pin PC connections. So if you've got a fan like this, um, let's just put that in. Um, you've got a standard uh, connection like this, for instance, that will fit in there perfectly fine. No problems at all. Um, on the board as well, you can see we've got two pots here. I'm going to go into those in a minute and we've also got a bank of switches as well and this is where the first uh, limitation of this device actually comes in this board is sold as a uh, temperature controlled speed controller so the idea being that when the temperature gets hot um, the speed can be ramped up and you can choose that temperature based upon the switches here the fact is this board will only control fan one on the thermal uh, circuitry here. So if you wanted two fans to respond to temperature change, the best thing you can do is to get a Y splitter and split it off from fan one. Fan two and fan three, their speed is controlled by these two pots here. And you can dial those around from 10% duty cycle right up to 100%. I'm going to give you a demonstration of all this in a minute. So the first limitation is fan one is the only one which is controlled by temperature change. Um, those temperatures can be altered by the dip switches. I'll show you that in a minute what those temperatures actually are. So I think maybe what we should do is just give you an active demonstration of how this thing works. So we'll plug it into fan one. like so, get some power, and hopefully you can see the fan working, and um, you can see the LED on the board as well, maybe just up here. Okay, so the idea being now is that if I was to add heat to this uh, thermocouple, that will increase in speed. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully we'll get some strobing on the camera so you can see a difference in the fan speed itself. So I'm just going to use a hot air gun, which is on my desk here, uh, which is this thing here. And all I'm going to do is just go and apply some hot air to the probe. And hopefully you should see a change in the speed. If I let it go, So it cools down. Yeah, you can see some strobe in there of the fan as it changes speed. Let's turn warm it up again. Yep, 
and away. Okay, there we go. So you can see that that's working quite neatly. Um, the temperatures it chooses, these dip switches, obviously they can change in temperatures. At the moment it's set at its lowest temperature, which is 35 degrees, it runs at its slower speed. Um, up to 35 degrees, I should say, it runs at its slower speed. And then from 35 degrees up to 45 degrees, it uh, ramps up the speed until 45 degrees uh, temperature in Celsius, it's then 100% um, duty cycle. Now these things are measured in duty cycle because this fan is rated at 1800 RPM, which means that it's gonna reach 1800 RPM, but there are other fans which do other speeds. So that's why they rate it as a percentage. Now the second big limitation of this one is that if I make any changes to this circuitry here, so if I change these switches over, um, it won't make any change to the device until um, I power on, power off and power on the, the actual circuit. The first switch there is the speed on which the fan is running before it starts to ramp it up. So at the moment it's set to 40%. So that's running at 40% its duty cycle. If I make this change here now, this will make it 20%. But as you can see, the speed has not changed at all. So if I power cycle the device, so you can see it's slowing right down there, well, it come to a stop and then you'll see a difference. And if I switch it on now, that's running at 20%, uh, not 40%. So you can see that there's a very much a big difference there in the fan speed. So any changes you make to this particular device has to be done um, and then the thing is power cycled. It, it seems to understand its switch settings and switch positions on power up. Um, it doesn't actively pull them as it's running. Right, I just wanna go through fan two with you. Um, as you can see, I've wired it up now, so it's running. Um, and I just wanna explain that's what these two pots here are doing. You can vary the speed just by using these pots here. So if we turn it down, this will go right down to 10% of its duty cycle. So it's still slowing down, there we go. And then you can spin it all the way around and it goes right up to 100%, which you can see there, beautiful. Let's turn that one back down. So like I said, these switches do not affect fan two or fan three. It's purely for fan one. There is, however, one switch on here which does relate to fan two and only fan two. Let me power it off and I'll show you what I mean. We've got here a buzzer and that is a stall buzzer. If the uh, fan is running below around 800 RPM, you can activate it so that an alarm activates. And so far you've, you've heard it being very, very quiet. Pin four is for fan one. Um, so again, you can have the buzzer on fan one and pin five or switch five is for fan two. So what I've done is I've just enabled that there now for fan two and you'll probably hear it beep on startup. There we go. And there's also a flashing of the LED there as well to let you know that there's a, a, a an alarm in place. So the idea is, is that uh, the fan is running. Let's get it running a bit quicker. So the idea is, is that the fan is running and uh, if it detects that the fan is not running or un running under 800 RPM, then the, uh, the alarm will sound. So if I just stop the fan, we've got an alarm situation going on there. Once it spools up to past 800 RPM-ish, uh, the alarm deactivates. Now, of course, like I said, if I move this switch now so that that buzzer alarm state is off, um, I'll need to power it back up again in order for those changes to be uh, accepted. So if I power it off and power it on, no alarm. So there we go. Now that is for fan two only. There is no alarm on fan three. So that's another limitation. So if you do want a constant um, 
constant speed, but you want alarm, then again, put a Y splitter on fan two, just the same as you would need to on fan one. In terms of the current uh, capabilities of this board, it states it can handle up to five amps. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what that means, whether that's five amps per fan or five amps in total. Um, another line in its very badly translated English is that it says the bus can handle nine amps. So I'm not really sure what that would mean. I'm sure if you were to put three fans on here that would exceed five amps, I'm pretty sure that this, this thing would struggle. Um, so yes, I can't work that one out. Um, so that's uh, fan two. Fan three is exactly the same. There's no alarm on it. You can control the, the speed via that pot there. So let's swap over uh, now to use fan one, and I'm gonna show you some of the setting changes on these uh, dip switches here. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is uh, switch one. Uh, it's labeled as TFL, and this changes the um, cold speed. Uh, this is the speed of the fan before it starts to ramp up to its temperature. So switch one, switch on, on like so, and that is at 40% of uh, its duty cycle. So in this case, that fan will be running about that fast. It's all right, it's not great. When it starts to ramp up in its current configuration, when it starts to ramp up at about 35 degrees, then it will go up to 100%. If I switch it off, pin one, let me just power it up again, that will be at 20% like so. So switch two and switch three, these dictate the, the temperatures in which uh, the, the, it's the cold temperature, the ramping up, and then the full 100% uh, duty cycle. So let me go through these with right now. In its current configuration, um, it's running at 20% duty cycle, and its ramp up speed will be 35 degrees, and its uh, maximum uh, temperature will be 45 degrees. So when it gets to 45 degrees, that will be running at 100% duty cycle. If I change the configuration round so that the first pin, so pin uh, two, sorry, switch two, I don't know why I'm calling them pins. If I do that, so switch two and switch three are like this, uh, it won't ramp up until it gets to 40 degrees, and then it'll be at 100% by the time it gets to 55 degrees. Um, if I change it round the other way, so that two is off and three is on, um, it will start to ramp at 50 degrees and it'll be 100% by the time it gets to 70 degrees. And then finally, the last setting, both of them on, that will be uh, ramping up at about 60 degrees and at 90 degrees, it'll be 100%. So that's um, that's the, uh, the pin configuration there. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I would have liked it to have been a little bit cooler because the application in which I'm using this particular one for, I want it to ramp at a lower temperature. Um, let's just talk about this thermal probe here. So I've got a feeling it's nothing more complicated than a 50K thermal probe. Let's just bring, the, um, bring this meter in here and let's just put it across the terminals there. and press R to make sure we get the pin. It's 44, 45 kilo ohms, is that? Yeah, 45 kilo ohms. I would say a 50 kilo ohms would do fine, wouldn't it? So this is the ZF, the ZFC39, and this particular board is the version 1.2. And I hope if I hold it up a bit closer, you can see it for its glory. It's okay, I think. It's gonna do what I want it to do. Um, I hope that this video gives you some technical overview of how it works and why it works. Um, the fan that I'm using here, by the way, it's a very cheap and nasty uh, computer fan. I paid 4 dollars from this one. I think on eBay, or was it Amazon? I can't remember. Um, I paid not a lot for it, put it that way. So. $4.99 for the fan, a fiver for that thing. Um, so, well, for about 11, 12 quid, you've got a temperature controlled uh, installation with a very short thermocouple uh, lead. So there we go. I hope that is useful for you. Um, 
if you've got any uh, questions about this thing, don't ask me, I really don't know. I've put a link to this in eBay. Um, they're, they're available everywhere. That will be in the uh, description of this video. Um, yeah, there we go. I hope it's useful for somebody. Um, certainly when I was trying to research it a bit more, there was no information out there. So this is all based upon my experience so far. So there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.